Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday morning, March the 20th. We've had quite an impressive stratospheric warming event underway, really got underway in the latter part of the month of February, continues to this day, and we'll kind of focus in on that uh, uh, stratospheric warming and its potential implications on the temperature pattern across the U.S. going forward through the remainder of March and even well into the month of April. It's quite an interesting phenomenon in which uh, the temperatures suddenly warm up near or over the North Pole. Typically this time of the year you have a stratospheric polar vortex where it's a cold temperatures centered right near the North Pole or, or, or over the North Pole, cold uh, relative to all the surrounding temperatures. However, uh, uh, once or twice or maybe multiple times during a winter season you get the stratospheric warming where you kind of disrupt that polar vortex and sometimes it is just simply displaced onto uh, another side of the North Pole, maybe the Asia side or the U.S. side. Other times, as is the case here, it kind of splits into multiple pieces here. What we're looking at here is a kind of a snapshot view of the stratospheric temperature pattern. Right now, March the 20th, this is how it looks at 10 millibar level here with Again, the North Pole right in this area right here, we've seen this kind of a map before. This is a top-down view. The U.S. is right over here. And here is one piece of the polar vortex, and here is another piece. Indeed, right here, this is the polar vortex that has been kind of weakened, kind of split into two, and you have this warmer area. It's not warm, but relative to the polar vortex temperatures, it is a warmer area now centered right over the North Pole. You can see the temperature scale down here, the blue, the polar vortex in the range of minus 60, minus 65 Celsius, whereas the red, maybe minus 30 Celsius. Again, uh, relative to the polar vortex, this is indeed quite a significant warm up here over the North Pole. Now, this is an interesting phenomenon. The basic uh, chain of events that takes place is when you have the stratosphere warming up, that layer of the atmosphere expands and to kind of counterbalance that, the lower part of the atmosphere contracts or cools down. So you, uh, this is one way to uh, develop some cold air masses in the lower part of the atmosphere over the polar region. And then typically these cold air masses from the high latitudes get unleashed into the middle latitudes and of course in the, uh, the U.S. we are in the middle latitudes here. And, uh, indeed, in this particular uh, situation here, I believe the stratospheric warming event can result in cold air outbreaks into the U.S. Th uh, throughout the remainder of the month of March and well into the month of April. Kind of an interesting characteristic of stratospheric warming is it takes several weeks to uh, uh, process, to go through from the beginning to the end stage, and then there's a lag time of several weeks before it actually can have an impact on U.S. temperatures. So with this beginning during the middle or latter part of February, I think the real impact here on U.S. temperatures will be in the latter part of March and going all the way into at least the middle part of April, again with additional cold air outbreaks coming from Canada into the U.S. Well, that last map was a snapshot of temperatures this particular uh, sequence of graphics here, 30-day temperature loop at that same level, the 10 millibar level. Now, just to orient yourself, uh, uh, right here we have the 90-degree north latitude line going across the top here, basically the polar region here. And uh, we're going uh, back in time to the uh, 17th of February, going all the way through the uh, 17th of March and watching how we had this stratospheric warming event. All this red here represents the uh, temperature anomalies, and you can see a significant warm-up in the polar region here during the middle and latter part of March. Again, it really got underway in the uh, latter part of February and continues over a 30-day period here uh, with uh, all across the polar region warmer than normal uh, temperatures uh, right now. Uh, especially compared to those um, you know, polar vortex pieces that have been displaced away from the pole. So indeed, uh, another way to look at this uh, stratospheric warming event is with this 30-day temperature loop here, and indeed quite an impressive stratospheric warming event. 
Now here is one last way to take a look at the stratospheric warming event. What we're looking at is a timeline across the bottom here, all the way through last year, 2024, and then now into this early part of 2025. The red represents the 10 millibar uh, stratospheric temperatures here, and you could see a very impressive spike here. This red spike here represents the uh, stratospheric warming. Impressive spike. We had nothing like that last winter. Here is the same time frame, February, March of last winter. It did uh, show some uh, uh, increase in stratospheric temperatures, but not a spike like this. Again, this is very impressive levels here. Um, we don't have this kind of a stratospheric warming event every winter, but again, this winter we've had more than one stratospheric warming event. You can see another one right down here, and even a little bit of, of one back in the early part of January, but this is the most impressive so far, and again, I believe the bottom line here is this will have an impact with additional cold air outbreaks across the U.S. latter part of March going well into the month of April. Well, what kind of impact can this stratospheric warming event on the U.S. temperature pattern here? Well, uh, these particular maps come from a fellow Penn State meteorologist, Joe Bastardi, who put this together here. He went back uh, several decades to find similar stratospheric warming events this time of the year that focused in on the month of uh, February into March for the stratospheric warming event. And then what we're seeing here on the right are those temperature anomalies during the month of April in those particular years. And in, in this particular case, there are six uh, cases here in the month of March for stratospheric warming events. And these are the averages for the 10 millibar temperature anomalies in those particular years, those six years, 1975, 82, 84, 93, 2007, 2018. Very similar look on average for those six years uh, to what we see right now, that snapshot temperature pattern we saw up front with warmer than normal conditions across the pole, right over the pole with a polar vortex kind of split uh, well away from the North Pole. Very similar look in these particular six analog, analog years or uh, uh, when the stratospheric warming event took place in March of those years, just as it is this year. And look at the month of April when you average together all of these years. And I went through each one of these individually and every single one of them had the bulk of the nation colder than normal for the month of April. Now this doesn't guarantee that will have a look like this, but it certainly raises the chance for a colder than normal uh, April across much of the nation. Again, I think this impact really begins during the latter uh, part of March, the last week or so of the month of March. So very strong signal here for some cold air outbreaks to continue well into the month of April across much of the nation. And this is an interesting year right here, 1982. You know, Major League Baseball got underway the last couple of days with a couple of games in Tokyo that actually count. The main part of the season gets underway in one week, next Thursday, March 27th. With this stratospheric warming event, I uh, firmly believe there will be lots of early season games that are played in the cold weather, colder than normal conditions here, uh, mainly uh, in those areas across the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Northeast, maybe the Mid-Atlantic region as well. I'm talking about cities like Chicago, where the Cubs and White Sox, of course, play. Cleveland, Cincinnati, uh, Boston, New York City, uh, even Philly and, and Washington, D.C. can have some cold weather early season games. 1982 happened to be a year very similar to this year where we have this impressive stratospheric warming event in March and then lots of cold weather in April. And in April of uh, 1982, there was indeed a snowstorm in, uh, that impacted the I-95 corridor region. The Yankees and Mets home openers were postponed. In fact, New York City got a foot of snow. It was around April 6 of 1982. Not saying that that will happen this, this uh, year, but certainly snow is a possibility in uh, those higher elevation regions of the Northeast U.S., uh, from the Poconos to the Catskills, all the way up to Vermont and New Hampshire, 
and uh, cannot completely rule out the chance of snow even in the I-95 car Carter region, even in the big cities in this kind of a pattern. Again, it has happened before, not often, but it's happened before that you, you can get snow uh, even in the big cities of the northeastern part of the nation. And one of those years happened to be April of 1982, where the early part of the baseball season was uh, marred uh, not only by cold weather, but by snow in places like New York City and uh, Baltimore, Philadelphia, again with a blizzard on uh, April 6th in 1982 with a foot of snow in New York City. So very impressive signal here. We'll see how things unfold over the next several weeks. Well, speaking of temperatures, let's take, take a look at the ensemble run of the European model from last night at zero Z with respect to the 850 millibar temperature anomalies. We have a lot of warmer than normal conditions as we begin the day here on Thursday, uh, March the 20th, but colder than normal out across the heartland here, right across the uh, Mississippi Valley region. Now, let's move forward here and again remember this stratospheric warming event suggests to me we have multiple cold air outbreaks to go through, to suffer through across much of the nation latter part of March going well into the month of April. Here we are uh, early in the upcoming weekend, another cold air outbreak for the Great Lakes region headed into the northeast. It uh, does have a slight impact in the Mid-Atlantic region, much more of an impact with, uh, in terms of colder than normal conditions out across the northeastern states here. Then we'll move forward in time here and here we go by uh, the, uh, or Tuesday of next week. A lot of warm conditions out across the west, but colder than normal out across the uh, Great Lakes region into the northeast, and it kind of hangs around like that into the middle part of next week. And here we go by next Thursday. Again, this is when the uh, big league ba ba baseball season gets underway in earnest. Games in New York City, for example, with the Yankees playing. Even in Washington, D.C., where the Phillies open up, Next Thursday, March 27th, could be quite cold indeed. And again, I think uh, there are go going to be a lot of early season games played in cold weather across the Midwest, uh, the, uh, the Great Lakes, like Detroit Tigers, for example, and all the way from Boston down to New York, Philadelphia, even Washington, D.C. Very warm, on the other hand, out across the western states. A week from right now, this is next Thursday, the 27th, we'll go a little bit farther in time here and indeed stays colder than normal out across the northeast U.S. This is uh, next Saturday, March the 29th, a lot of warmer than normal conditions out across the middle of the nation and turning colder again out across the west coast from California up to Washington and Oregon. Now let's stick with the European model, the zero Z conventional run of the European model. Uh, from last night here, and we'll look at the surface forecast maps. There is a cold frontal system right now sliding across the Ohio Valley, moving on a west to east track here. It'll reach the eastern seaboard later tonight here and produce some rain in that I-95 corridor region from D.C. to Philadelphia, ultimately to New York City, late today into tonight, maybe in an isolated thunderstorm or two here, a beneficial rainfall, probably uh, somewhere in the range of a half an inch for that D.C., Philadelphia, New York City corridor. And now in the interior sections of the northeast U.S., you can certainly can't get some uh, snow uh, mixing in with the rain or even a change over to snow in some of those higher elevation locations from the Poconos up to the Catskills and certainly Vermont and New Hampshire can't see some snow out of this on Friday. That system moves on by. Notice once again we have a kind of a, a tight pressure gradient here uh, uh, between the departing low and the approaching high, all these isobars here rather tight. Expect to see 40 mile per hour winds on Friday, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Uh, and that strong type of wind up to 40 miles per hour or so can actually start in those areas late tonight in the wee hours of the morning, but certainly through the day on Friday. Expect strong northwesterly winds on the backside of the cold frontal system. Then we move ahead into the upcoming weekend and there will be another cold frontal system right here. Not all that impressive in terms of its precipitation amounts, but it can produce a shower or two in the middle Atlantic region on Saturday. And then it turns cooler behind it for Sunday. Here we go into Sunday morning and uh, quite a cool air mass out across this part of the nation on Sunday. Even 
uh, some accumulating snow up across the northern plains here on uh, Sunday. Continue to move forward here. That system produces some uh, rain in the Mid-Atlantic region by the time we get to Sunday night and Monday. Snow up across the Great Lakes into the Hudson Bay region of Canada. This is the early part of next week, next Monday. And that uh, sends another cold front, and here's that cold front as of Monday evening, right in this area right here, moving in this direction. That will usher in, very likely, another cold air mass, colder than normal for this time of the year, into the Mid-Atlantic region, into the Great Lakes, Midwest. And again, this is now the middle part of next week. Could be cold enough for snow, uh, especially those higher elevation locations. Skiers will be happy with this pattern here from the Poconos to the Catskills and certainly Vermont and New Hampshire ski resorts will have plenty of snow to deal with with this ongoing stratospheric warming event. And here we go all the way out to next Thursday. This is again when Major League Baseball gets underway in earnest next Thursday, a week from right now, with games in New York City and Washington, D.C. and Chicago with the White Sox. The New York City game is with the Yankees. Could be quite a chilly start to the 2025 baseball season. At this particular time, we have colder than normal conditions right in this part of the nation. And this kind of a pattern uh, will continue, I believe, well into the month of April with that kind of a lag that happens whenever you have a stratospheric warming event this time of the year. We could kind of suffer through a lot of early season cold weather games in the uh, Major League Baseball season here. So that's it for now. For ArcfieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.